The morning light streamed through the kitchen window, casting a harsh glare on the phone clutched in my hand. John, always glued to that thing, even at dinner, had left it behind in his rush to work. As I went to put it on the charger, a notification blinked on the screen, revealing a string of messages from an unknown number. My stomach lurched as I read, Are you coming here today? Or to your legal wife? Each word was a shard of ice piercing my heart. Legal wife? Who was Mia? Panic clawed at my throat. Just then, the front door slammed shut and John burst in, frantic. Have you seen my phone? He demanded. Seems I left it at home. My voice was barely a whisper as I held the phone out to him, my hand trembling. What's this all about? I asked, forcing a calmness I didn't feel. John's face drained of color as he saw the messages. He took a deep breath, the weight of his betrayal heavy in the air. I was going to tell you, he mumbled, his eyes avoiding mine. Everything is prepared. Prepared for what? My voice cracked. I... I have someone else, Susan, he confessed finally. Mia. Those messages were from her. The world tilted on its axis. Fifteen years. He'd been living a lie for fifteen years? And a daughter? I gasped. John nodded, shame twisting his features. Her daughter is about Emily's age. They could be half-sisters. His next words were a dagger to my heart. I'm planning a divorce. To marry Mia and be a father to their child. It'll be difficult for her entering high school. You understand, right? Understand? How could I understand the man I'd shared 25 years with proposing to abandon our family for a secret life? And Emily? I managed, my voice thick with tears. What about her? She's your daughter, Susan. You can take care of her. I'll pay child support, of course. And if Emily wants to contact me, well... He shrugged dismissively. The audacity of it all. He wanted a clean break, leaving me to pick up the pieces of our shattered lives. A good deal? I spat, my voice rising. John, you've destroyed everything. He handed me a pre-filled divorce paper, his face devoid of emotion. Just sign it, Susan. It'll be easier for everyone. Easier for you, you mean? His expression remained unchanged. I'll come for my things when it's finalized. With a final cold goodbye, John walked out leaving me with the weight of his betrayal and the looming threat of a broken family. As I looked down at the phone in my hand, the evidence of his deceit, a sob escaped my lips. But amidst the pain, a fierce determination flared within me. I wouldn't let him break us. I would fight for Emily, for myself, and rebuild our lives stronger than ever. Tears streamed down my face as Emily absorbed the bombshell I dropped. Divorce papers? She whispered her voice barely audible. And this is a mistress? Does Dad seriously think this is okay? The anger simmering inside me boiled over. Apparently, he has another child over there, I choked out. A daughter your age, your half-sister. Emily's eyes widened. What? But what about apologies? You're the one he betrayed. John, a serial liar apparently, offered none. Instead, he planned to pay child support and waltz away, leaving me to pick up the pieces. He's got some nerve, Emily muttered, biting her lip. Then a glint of determination flickered in her eyes. Wait, Mom, I have an idea. My heart pounded. An idea about what? If Dad wants to be like that, she declared, a mischievous glint in her eyes, then we'll have our own plan. Revenge wasn't my initial thought, but seeing Emily's outrage fueled a fire in me, too. What kind of plan? I asked cautiously. Don't worry, she reassured me, a sly smile playing on her lips. Nothing life-threatening. Since Dad clearly doesn't understand the weight of his betrayal, we'll make him regret it to his core. A shiver ran down my spine. But how? And what about preparation? Emily, bless her genius mind, had already thought ahead. Relax, Mom, she said, her voice laced with a confidence that surprised me. Trust me, Dad will get a taste of his own medicine. Just to be clear, I began, a sliver of doubt lingering. You're not blaming yourself for any of this, right? It's all on him. Absolutely, she declared, squeezing my hand. Don't you even think about taking the blame. This is Dad's mess, and he'll clean it up the hard way. A sense of vindication washed over me. It wouldn't be a fiery, destructive revenge, but a calculated response that would expose his deceit. 
And who better to deliver it than his own daughter, the brilliant mind he'd underestimated? A month later, our new routine of just the two of us was settling in. Then, the front door swung open, revealing a disheveled John. Patches of his hair were haphazardly shaved off, and his face contorted in fury. What in the world happened to you? I gasped, surprised by his appearance. What in the world happened to you? He roared, gesturing wildly at his head. Your mother! My stomach lurched. Mom did this? She showed up at my mistress's place with a pair of clippers and... He ranted about a surprise attack, a forced haircut, and a humiliating escape. See? He continued directing his anger toward me. I told you not to do anything unnecessary. You knew how much I hated dishonesty. Thanks to you, I'm a laughingstock. Before I could defend myself, Emily stepped forward. Hold on a second, Dad. There's been a misunderstanding. John's tirade faltered as he looked at Emily, his face contorted in confusion. What misunderstanding? It wasn't Mom who told Grandpa, Emily stated calmly. It was me. John's jaw dropped. You? But the clippers. Exactly as expected, Emily said coolly. Expected? Did you tell Grandpa to attack me? Not exactly, she replied, a playful smirk tugging at her lips. I just gave him some evidence. A bead of sweat trickled down John's temple. Evidence? What evidence? Emily held up a flash drive, a mischievous glint in her eyes. Let's just say... It details a little affair that's been going on for over a month. Now, Mom, what do you think Dad fears most in the world? The fog of shock hadn't lifted when Emily, ever sharp, posed a question. The scariest thing to Dad? That'd be Grandpa, wouldn't it? I remembered asking John the same thing years ago. Grandpa, he'd answered without hesitation. My father-in-law was a man who abhorred dishonesty, a trait instilled in John since childhood. John had always walked a tightrope around him. I'll talk to Dad, John had thrown over his shoulder. Don't do anything unnecessary. It was clear Dad desperately wanted to keep Grandpa out of the loop. Fear pulsed through me. John might paint me as the villain, the unfaithful spouse. This wouldn't just hurt me. It could cost him his job. John had climbed the company ladder thanks to Grandpa's connections, but one whiff of infidelity, and Dad's career could crumble. Grandpa was his Achilles heel. We had to act before John spun his web of lies. We need evidence, I declared, the fog clearing a little. Already on it, Emily said with a determined glint. But how? John wouldn't leave incriminating evidence lying around. Detectives were expensive and passwords were a hurdle. No need for them, Emily scoffed, her fingers flying across the keyboard. Within seconds, a triumphant grin spread across her face. Unlocked, my jaw dropped. Wow, you're good. Elementary, Mom, she said, diving into the laptop. Looks like Dad's mistress was an old flame, someone he reconnected with while I was still a twinkle in your eye. Their emails paint a 15-year-long affair. A photo flickered on the screen, a warm smile on a woman's face. Recognition dawned. It's... it's his childhood friend. I met her once when we visited Dad's parents. A wave of nausea washed over me, Infidelity wasn't enough. It was built on a foundation of betrayal. Suddenly, Emily's breath hitched. Look at this, she whispered, pulling up another picture. A girl, 10 or 11, stared back, a haunting reflection of John in her eyes. This must be the secret child, my half-sister, I guess. Anguish twisted my gut, but Emily remained resolute. It seems like he hasn't officially acknowledged her yet. We had more questions than answers. But one thing was clear. John's carefully constructed world was about to crumble, and Grandpa's wrath would be the catalyst. Disgust churned in my stomach as I processed Emily's next discovery. He was planning to introduce her after the divorce? Maybe, she said, her voice tight with anger. There's no telling if this child even knows about us. The truth, laid bare on the screen, was a double betrayal. Not just the affair, but the hidden life he planned for his secret daughter. But Emily wasn't done. A new shock flickered across her face. What's this? She pulled up a financial document. A condo? A condo? I echoed, bewildered. We'd rented for years, his excuse being it was more cost-effective. For his mistress? Yeah, and a fancy one, a high-rise near the station. 
Looks like a hefty price tag, over a million. Fury bubbled within me. Here we were, scraping by, while he showered his mistress with luxuries. That's it? I asked, a flicker of doubt creeping in. It doesn't feel like enough. Emily, however, held a firm look. It's good. Concrete evidence would be ideal photos of them together, maybe leaving a hotel. But this paints a clear picture. The affair, the hidden child, his extravagant spending. It's enough to break the dam. She wasn't wrong. This was a glimpse into John's web of deceit, and it was enough to expose him. But Emily, ever the strategist, craved more. Direct evidence, she muttered, a mischievous glint in her eyes. That's what we need. Photos. Let's pay them a visit. The next day, armed with my camera, we stood across from the gleaming condo building. It looked far more imposing in person. He must have been saving everything for them, Emily whispered, her voice laced with disbelief. A movement caught our eye. John, with his mistress, the woman from the photos, and a young girl who could only be his hidden daughter, emerged from the building. I snapped a quick photo, capturing their picture of domestic bliss. It was sickening, the outward image of a happy family built on a foundation of lies. As they strolled down the street, we overheard snippets of their conversation. John's words, dripping with contempt, were aimed at me. Just shove the papers at her. Doesn't she understand? Maybe she still has feelings for you, the woman, his mistress, interjected, a cruel amusement in her voice. And then the clincher, spoken by the young girl, her voice dripping with childish entitlement. I don't care about her. Dad chose me. Emily's hand tightened around mine. We both felt the raw sting of their words. But amidst the anger, a cold determination settled within me. This wasn't just about hurting John anymore. It was about dismantling the illusion they'd built, about exposing the truth to all of them. We had the video evidence, their casual admissions captured on camera. Armed with this ammunition, we headed straight for a lawyer, ready to rewrite the terms of our game. The evidence wouldn't just ensure a fair settlement. It would be John's public downfall, with Grandpa the storm cloud brewing on the horizon. We'd expose his lies, not just to him, but to the entire world he'd tried to fool. Emily and I knew the final blow had to come from Grandpa. Unannounced visits were unheard of, so our arrival sent shockwaves through the house. Something happened? Mike, my father-in-law, boomed, sensing the storm brewing in my eyes. I took a deep breath and laid it all bare. The 15-year affair, the secret child, the extravagant condo for his mistress, every detail tumbled out. A tremor ran through Mike, then an explosion of fury. That lying scoundrel? Over 15 years? And a hidden grandchild? Where is he now? The mistress's place, I replied, my voice thick with bitterness. In a condo he bought for her, right near the station. Emily, who'd been watching Grandpa with a hawk-like intensity, piped up. He called their child his only daughter, she said, her voice shaking. Does that mean I'm not Grandpa's granddaughter anymore? Mike knelt before her, his large hand engulfing hers. Nonsense, Emily. You're our only granddaughter and nothing can change that. He'll pay for this, every single lie. His expression mirrored Emily's when she'd first hatched the plan, a cold fury simmering beneath the surface. A few days later, the news broke. Mike, armed with a pair of clippers, stormed into John's love nest. Dad, disheveled and humiliated, arrived back at the house muttering about an attack. But the real assault came next. These documents are for you, I said, handing him a brown envelope. He tore it open, his face draining of color as he scanned the contents. Child support? Division of property? His voice trailed off. Wondering about the child support amount? I asked, my voice devoid of emotion. Why wouldn't I? He sputtered. Seems fair to you now, doesn't it? Emily chimed in, a hint of satisfaction in her voice. After all, you didn't seem to have any trouble affording a million-dollar condo for your other family. John's eyes widened. The condo? That's marital property. Not anymore, Emily countered triumphantly. Division of assets, well-established fact. A flicker of panic crossed John's face for the first time. So you're kicking them out? Exactly, I said, meeting his gaze. The condo is being sold. New owners, new residents. 
You're heartless, he roared. Funny you should say that, I replied, my voice laced with steel. Fifteen years of lies, John. You've earned yourself this fate, he sputtered, a desperate plea forming on his lips. I can move back in. I'll break things off with her. Just reconsider the amount. Too late, Emily said, cutting him off. These terms are non-negotiable. Lawyer on retainer, remember? John slumped in defeat. Fine, fine, I get it. I'll move out. But we're still married. We need to talk. We? I scoffed. There is no we anymore, John. We're strangers. The divorce papers were filed the day you left. His jaw dropped. The storm brewing inside me for weeks finally unleashed, and a wave of unexpected calmness washed over me. Justice had been served. John's carefully constructed world had crumbled, his lies exposed, and it was all thanks to Emily, my brilliant daughter and grandpa, the ultimate weapon in our arsenal. So you're saying we're already divorced? John sputtered, disbelief lacing his voice. You got it, Emily declared, a satisfied smirk playing on her lips. The papers have been processed. You're no longer married. John's face paled. Damn it, he muttered, his eyes darting from me to Emily. And what about the alimony? It's too high. Think back, John, Emily said coolly. Remember that talk about child support? The one where you promised you'd pay until I graduated? Interestingly, you never did much in the father figure department, so at least live up to your word on this. John remained speechless, the weight of his deception settling around him like a shroud. Just then, my phone buzzed, a call from Mike. Seeing the caller ID, John blanched. It's your father, I said, unable to keep a hint of triumph from my voice. Oh, God, John whispered, his face draining of color again. Tell him I'm not here. No way, John, I countered. He knows you're here. Avoiding him won't fix anything. Reluctantly, John took the phone. Dad, he croaked, his voice devoid of the usual confidence. The conversation was brief, punctuated only by John's mumbled responses and Mike's booming voice. I could practically feel the fury radiating from the phone across the room. Finally, John hung up, his face a mask of despair. He, he wants me to come home. Looks like you better go then, I said, a touch of sarcasm creeping into my voice. Are you kidding? He roared, panic replacing his earlier defiance. If I go back there, I'm done for. Emily, never one to miss a beat, chimed in. Fretting here won't help, will it? Why are you so scared? Grandpa said, he said I'm fired, John stammered, his voice cracking. A dawning realization washed over me. Because of the affair? I asked, surprised. Apparently, John mumbled. Emily snorted. Well, that escalated quickly. John's eyes darted around the room like a trapped animal. It can't be legal, just an affair that has nothing to do with work. A harsh laugh escaped Mike's office door as he stormed into the room, his face flushed with anger. Nothing to do with work, he thundered. Have you forgotten all the built-up resentment? The constant absences, the tardiness, the problems with clients? Your co-workers cleaned up your messes constantly while you strutted around like royalty, untouchable because you were the president's son. John stammered, unable to refute the truth in his father's words. This wasn't a sudden decision, John, Mike continued, his voice low and dangerous. I've turned a blind eye for years, but that ends today. You betrayed the trust of the company, and worse, betrayed the trust of your family. Don't bother showing your face around here again. Mike's words hung heavy in the air. John sank to his knees, defeated. This wasn't just about the divorce. It was about the complete severing of ties. The son he'd tried to protect, the heir apparent, all gone. His screams of protest and pleas for forgiveness were drowned out as Mike turned his back on him and walked away. A few days later, as predicted, John hired a lawyer. His appeal to reduce the alimony was promptly rejected. It turned out his mistress, a part-time housewife with a meager income, was entirely dependent on him. With his new reality sinking in, John showed up at our door, a broken figure pleading for leniency. I admit my mistakes, he said his voice thick with desperation. But I can't afford this kind of payment. There wasn't a shred of pity in my heart. This was the price he paid for his choices, and frankly, it wasn't enough. He'd broken our family, 
tarnished my trust and lied for years. The damage was done, and the only satisfaction I could find was watching his carefully constructed world crumble around him. The final blow came from John's own wallet. Emily, ever the strategist, had ensured the alimony payment was hefty enough to make him sweat. Sure enough, when John showed up at our doorstep a few days later, his bravado was gone, replaced by a desperate plea. Look, he stammered, I know I messed up, but can't we just reduce the alimony amount? Even in half, no, maybe even 30% less? I just can't afford this. The audacity of it all made my blood boil. Can't afford it? I echoed, my voice dripping with scorn. Perhaps you should have thought about that before building a whole other life without considering the financial ramifications. John attempted to argue, but it was pointless. Emily, with her sharp legal team, had ensured the settlement was airtight. John stormed out defeated, the echo of his frustration clinging to the air. As it turned out, the hefty alimony payment proved too much for his new family. His mistress, who had perhaps envisioned a life of luxury, wasn't thrilled about relying on her income alone. John's carefully constructed facade crumbled further. The secret child, about to enter a prestigious high school, was forced to settle for a public one thanks to the financial strain. For us, though, a sense of closure and justice settled in. Emily, ever the planner, ensured the financial blow was delivered alongside the emotional one. It was a strategic masterclass, and honestly, I couldn't be prouder of her. The day arrived for Emily to move into her dorm. Standing in her new room, surrounded by half-unpacked boxes and a nervous energy, I felt a pang of worry. You sure you'll be okay? I asked, voicing the unspoken concern. She rolled her eyes, a playful smile dancing on her lips. Mom, after everything we've pulled off, don't you worry about me for a second. I can handle anything college throws my way. And I knew she could. Throughout the entire ordeal, Emily had remained the steely anchor in our storm. Her quick thinking, fierce determination, and unwavering support had been my saving grace. As I watched her get settled, a wave of pride washed over me. My daughter wasn't just surviving, she was thriving. John might have shattered our family, but in the process, he'd inadvertently forged an even stronger bond between Emily and me. We had faced the storm together and emerged on the other side, stronger, closer, and a whole lot wiser.